So I've done a couple like this one. You might have seen Critical Drinkers Grift Exposed. Whoa, what? Nothing but media. Xander Hall used one on a stream? This one? That's fucking awesome. Nice. Hell yeah. Paste. Damn. Oh god. Oh, here's the uh here's another graphic that it, that shows it. This is funny. So this is it two months ago. Drinkers Chasers, why nobody cares about House of the Dragon. Uh and then uh nobody cares narrative. Genuinely had no idea uh House of the Dragon had even started. There seems to be no buzz around it at all. The reality, the verge. HBO calls House of the Dragon its biggest premiere ever with nearly 10 million US viewers. And then he changed the title to House of the Dragon Trailer Breakdown. When reality doesn't support your, uh, support your grift, you have to improvise. This is a very good graphic, god damn. There it is, guys. I don't know if you guys follow me on Twitter, but my has been blowing up since I started posting these graphics. And I'm, I'm here for it. So, how the fandom menace manufactures content for clickbait. So, it's House of Dragon versus Rings of Power. We talked about that a little bit. Mm -hmm. But this is interesting. And thank you. Shout out to Fandom Menace posting their L's, the Twitter account. They do excellent work of like collecting this stuff and debunking and so on and so forth. Before Rings of Power, and you can see here Nerd Roddick, Ryan Kennel, quartering. House of the Dragon is woke. It hates white people and men will fail, etc. Racist, sexist, click, clickbait. So right here, woke disaster. Uh, showrunner race swapped characters because there's too many white people, which is not what was said, but, you know. Uh, House of the Dragon hates men. And then, you know, the quartering with his lowest common denominator of these guys, which is pretty fucking sad. They're all really lowest common denominator, but the quartering is just the laziest woke trash incoming. These guys are hanging out in the, the anti-woke house. This uh, quartering is pissing in that basement of that house, yep. basically. Yep. So then after Rings of Power, which, you know, of course, is way more of a woke gold mine for them, right? Like they, and credit where it's due, I guess. But like, they're good at this as far as knowing what the thing is they should lean into, Right. After Rings of Power debuted, which is like a week or two after, I guess, uh, House of the Dragon. And obviously, these are two mega popular shows that are going to be talked about in the in the discourse and in, most importantly to these guys, in the trending tab, in the algorithms. And by changing their opinions and changing the thing that they're for to be, you know, or against to being for it against the other thing, now they can have both of them in their titles they can have both of them in their thumbnails. They can have them both in their algorithm, in their keywords. So in the algorithm, and then uh, they also get the conflict that they need, that they thrive on. Right? They they have to have conflict. They they must. Uh, and so it became House of the Dragon destroys Rings of Power, and then they're praising House of the Dragon. No more mention of House of the Dragon being woke. No more mention of any of this stuff up here. Just a couple of weeks or a month before. Nope, now it's like they just got wrecked. Rings of power ratings are terrible. Amazon no, gets just right, it's not true. It's not. Uh, but Amazon gets destroyed by House of the Dragon. Uh, and then here are the quartering. Look, these are all the same guys, too. I'm not just like showing you random examples. So <laughs> uh, these are the exact same dudes. Uh, House of the Dragon destroys rings of power in the ratings, but it's by the quartering. Uh, then Ryan Kennel tweeting how he, he liked it, and he look. I'll admit, he did say here, he really thought he was going to hate the series, but he's loving it so far. And then, yeah, you know, so that's actually rare praise that's, that's, but let's think about the fact that would he have said that if he wasn't trying to shit on Lord of the Rings? Exactly. Would he have said that if Lord of the Rings didn't exist at this point? Probably not. Uh, Nerd Roddick responded, best episode so far. Here's a Geeks and Gamers title. Um, Woke Disaster for Amazon, destroyed by House of the Dragon. It's uh, it's crazy, man. The main thing that I think is important is it's not like people aren't allowed to change their minds, right? Like, if you, if you think something's going to be bad, and then it's not, and you're like, oh, shit, I was wrong. Uh, like, like Ryan Kennel says there, but do you think that they go back and, like, I don't know, hide those videos where they where they talked black people existing you know in in house of the dragon no they didn't they don't change any of that all that content is still up 
in theory forever it, it's still out there poisoning fucking people's brains uh, with sexism and racism and, and every other ism right um and, and it would be one thing if they were like okay you know what i thought it was going to be woke and terrible but it's not uh let me i don't know private those videos unlist them because that's the responsible thing to do but i mean they can't possibly do that because they're going to get ad revenue from those in perpetuity you got any thoughts on that perp no you nailed it i mean that, that, that's all there in the graph like you'd say it perfectly you know no wonder your your twitter's blowing up dude but this is going to be the project where i'll be working on these graphics it's you know over a period of time and i'm going to try and collect them somewhere website i don't know we'll, we'll figure it out still in early stages but i've called it wise af our fandoms are preyed upon by YouTubers and other opportunists who spread misinformation and bigotry. They create hateful narratives and hostile fan spaces, particularly due to people of color, LGBTQ+, disabled and female fans, and for just anyone who wants to enjoy their fandoms. Uh, Anti-fans, as we call them, embolden malicious people who can actually harm unprepared fans. It doesn't have to be this way. By staying aware and informed and by pushing back against the harmful narratives, we can begin to take fandom back for actual fans. Like I said, an ongoing project to document the various anti-fandom creators, figures who use misinformation, deception, and bigotry uh, to manipulate fans and make fandoms unsafe. Uh, it will also lay out the tactics and rhetoric used by anti-fans as well as the harm that's caused. Uh, so really just more of like a, a summarized uh, graphic version of what I do anyway. But like basically just distilled down into the most direct uh, examples I possibly can. Awesome. It'll take a lot of work and the specific experience of the team involved, which is so far pretty much just me. <laughs> uh, I'm sure I'll get input from others and maybe some help <laughs> down the road. But uh, if you feel this is a worthwhile endeavor and you'd like to support it, you can do so at patreon.com slash actual fandom. Wise as fuck, y'all. All right. I love it. I love it. And it, you distilled the talking points to the absolute essential words and i and i love that and, and let me tell you guys i use dane's talking points his arguments all the time and they work they're awesome people stop engaging with me it's great yeah. you could you could have these people stop <laughs> you know you guys might have seen the other uh, previous ones that i did like i started out just doing them on a whim and then i realized oh wait these are really effective people appreciate these i've had yeah. several people in replies or, or quote tweets like holy shit i've never realized it like this before and that's really it's fucking satisfying because that's all i've ever wanted to do with this channel. well not all but a lot of what i've wanted to do is just get people to see these patterns and to see these tactics and it's like i understand that most people have regular lives and brains and i'm not faulting anyone but like being obsessed with detail and context the way that i am it, it you know it's hard for me to ignore. So I've done a couple like this one already. You might have seen Critical Drinker's Grift Exposed. Uh, here's where he changed his old video title. Nobody cares about House of the Dragon. So another one, just like what we looked at. Nobody cares. Uh, nobody, nobody cares. Genuinely had no idea the House of the Dragon had started. There seems to be no buzz about it at all. And then that same day, news came out that House of the Dragon is the biggest HBO premiere ever. Uh, with 10 million U.S. viewers. Uh, and then he changed this same, this is the same video. House of the Dragon trailer breakdown. Notice it's it's not shit, not anymore. Nope, nobody's, nobody cares. You know, and that's just one small example. Yeah, you got him there. And then there's this one, I think, it's probably my favorite one so far. Well, I guess maybe the newest one, but um, the YouTube film review grift. Once again, drinker. So a clickbait title as a uh, this is the trailer reaction. We we looked at some of this. We looked at at least the thumbnail on in video. Uh, how to spoil a good idea? This was based just on the trailer and having a woman in it. I think I don't know. Um, now the ideal outcome would be the movie's poorly received, and then he can just claim victory. But what actually happened? Uh oh. <laughs> well received. Don't panic. You've got options. Trust your fans to review bomb it. Blame shills, paid critics, and bots. Change the talking point from the reviews are like you. If if the reviews are bad, that's what they're going to focus on. 
Yes, and, they, and it, it bothers the hell out of me that they call movies they don't like flops when they're like billion dollar movies. Like they're calling Thor a flop. They're calling Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness a flop. It's like you guys don't know what that word means, do you? Uh, whoa, what? Nothing but media. Xander Hall used one on a stream. That's fucking awesome. Nice. Hell yeah. Based. Damn. Uh, uh, he's uh, back when he was called Pig, Pun Pig Puncher early in my YouTube career. Uh, he gave me a pretty, pretty good boost. I don't know if he knows I'm the same guy. All these things, you, you'll recognize these tactics. They do all these. Uh, so, yeah, when it's the reviews are good, they'll focus on, oh, the box office is low. Or the other way around, right? Like, the, whatever framing that they have to use, they're going to do it. Uh, you can lie. Just literally make shit up. Some of them do that. Uh, change the old video titles like we looked at. And then a fence-sitting review with backhanded praise. This is kind of the funniest to me for some reason. But, like... His actual review is, it's no masterpiece, but surprisingly good. You know, it's like going up to a chick at the bar and saying, you know, I wouldn't think that, you, uh, you know, that dress would look good with your body style, but you pull it off. <laughs> that kind of shit. Yeah. Yeah. It's like he can't, it's, it's almost like an ego thing. Like, he was like, all right, it was good, but it was no masterpiece. Damn it. Like, I was right. I was, so, I was a little right. right. Like, like how, how many of us actually... I mean, everybody wants a movie to be good. Nobody goes into a movie thinking, I don't hope it's bad. But like, I don't expect most movies to be a masterpiece. I don't, I honestly, I don't tend to think about that when I go into a movie at all. Because how, how you appreciate a movie, and this only goes to show how subjective this stuff is, is all about your expectations going in, right? Like, well, yeah. not all, but a lot of it. There, of course, there's execution is a factor too, but like a lot of it is, uh, you know, if I'm expecting this to be a masterpiece, oh, it wasn't a masterpiece. What if you just wanted a, a decent, like new twist on the Predator series? And it's like well executed. Uh, it's compelling narrative. You know, it, it touches on what made the original good as well as does its own thing. Well, shit, that's what exactly happened <laughs> in Prey. Yeah. Um, so then, then you can call it a good movie. Just, just weird framing how they do this stuff uh, to benefit themselves. Yeah, it's it's like he just heard a bunch of people liking the thing, and it's like, well, it's no masterpiece, it's like you know, because everyone thought it was good, right? It was yeah, like, right. No, it's, no one called it a masterpiece. No, that's one. another good point because they do that too. They like they have to respond to the cultural consensus, kind of, and and that's not even really the, the consensus. Most people were just like, it's really good. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And so he has to be a contrarian. He has to be a contrarian. But at the same time, he doesn't want to sully his reputation as a seasoned film critic, right? Yeah. So if he if he just started, started saying this movie sucks, I hate it, there'd be a lot of people in his audience that'd be like, dude, what are you what are you talking about? And then maybe not trust him so much anymore. So yeah. that's why they have to do stuff like this. Yeah, that's what happened with Jeremy and Shang Chi, I believe. Where he was saying, uh, it was garbage, it was garbage, and then all you kind of see a lot of pushback in the comment section <clears throat> for that one. Yep. Yeah, that's what they do. 